Welcome to the Tidewater Watershed. I am Dinah Henry of the Peninsula Master Naturalists. Our area encompasses York, Pocosin, Hampton, Newport News, and parts of Gloucester. Our watershed is bounded by the York River, the James River, and the Hampton Roads. I welcome you to come and explore our watershed. Our watershed is extremely diverse, which is both our challenge and our strength. We have freshwater underground aquifers and lakes that connect to salty seawater and beaches. Although our creeks and rivers are fresh water, many of them are affected by the salty tides. Marshes and flood plains are found everywhere. Some locations are salty at flood tide, fresh at ebb, and brackish in between. We are at the salt marshes where Lucas Creek meets the Warwick River, near where it meets the James. Groundsel, marsh elder, wax myrtle, loblolly pine, Spartina patens, and big cord grass abound. Further up Lucas Creek, the flora has changed completely with black and needle rush, pickerel weed, and arrow arum. This marsh is the home for egrets, herons, kingfishers, bald eagles, cooper hawks, cormorants, and many other waterfowl. Water quality in our watershed is routinely monitored by volunteers to deepen our knowledge of the condition of our watershed and to ensure public safety. We sample water quality in a variety of locations to ensure a more accurate assessment. You can see on this map the number and variety of locations where water quality is tested. The dozens of locations reflects the diversity of our watershed. Newmarket Creek in Hampton, Virginia offers us an excellent opportunity to study a waterway that begins in a semi-urban area and empties into the Chesapeake Bay in a relatively short run. Newmarket Creek starts off at Bluebird Gap Farms and is measured at four different locations as we move along the course of the creek. It's measured for temperature, salinity, bacterial load, and turbidity. At points closer to Bluebird Gap Farm, we find higher loads of bacteria in the water, primarily due to farm activity. As the water moves into a larger water area and is dispersed over a larger area, we see those bacterial loads decrease. Regular monitoring, as we see being done here, is the key to keeping this waterway safe for recreational and fishing use for the residents of the local area. This is Messick Point in the city of Pocosin. Messick Point is located just inside the mouth of Back River off of the Chesapeake Bay. Unlike the smaller creeks in the Tidewater area, Messick Point has deep water and is the launch for many work and pleasure boats. Located only 18 miles from the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay, its waters are primarily salty. Unlike Newmarket Creek and other estuaries in the Tidewater, which primarily flow downhill and toward the bay, Back River is tidal. Tidal rivers are challenging, with differences between high and low tide ranging to four feet. Flora and fauna must be adapted to shorelines that are regularly dry, then inundated, salty, then fresh water. Pocosin, like much of the Tidewater area, is low-lying, with floods encroaching on homes and roadways during spring and king tides. Areas like Messick Point become unreachable due to tidal influences. Messick Point's proximity to the bay also means wave erosion of shorelines. Efforts to create riparian buffers and living shorelines are encouraged. For our volunteers, testing and observing at our sites becomes difficult, not only for the daily tidal differences, but for storms and king tides. Please note the clarity of the water here at Messick Point. The clarity of the water is important because it allows the light to get all the way to the bottom, encouraging submerged aquatic vegetation. This vegetation is important because it provides a habitat for fish and encourages cleaner water. This is Denby Docks on the Warwick River in Newport News. The Warwick River is about two miles northwest of the James River and meanders through most of Newport News. Denby Docks is one of only a few
public boat ramps in Newport News. Popular with fishermen and crabbers, the parking lot is full of boat trailers on any weekend. The fishing pier is a popular spot year-round, primarily for catfish, striped bass, and croaker. And occasionally, there have been sightings of sturgeon in the waters. The Warwick River is muddy, unlike Back Creek in Pocosin, which has a sandy bottom. Because of its muddiness, turbidity is an issue, and underwater grasses are hard to find. Like other large creeks in the tidewater, the Warwick is primarily tidal with a strong current. But it is not deep, and channel markers line the edge of the deeper water. Homes along the river have piers that extend hundreds of feet to reach the deeper water. The shoreline must be adaptable to both high and low tide and alternate fresh and salt water. This river is home to bald eagles, herons, egrets, belted kingfishers, and other waterfowl. Because of the salty water as tide comes in, the shoreline is lined with salt-tolerant flora, groundsel, marsh elder, loblolly pines, spartina patens, and spartina alterniflora. This is the Hampton River, a three-mile tidal estuary through the heart of Hampton. It is close to the entrance to the Chesapeake Bay and the Hampton Roads, where the James, Nansamond, and Elizabeth River meet the bay. The Hampton River, because of its location close to the mouth of the bay, is used by commercial fishermen, crabbers and scallopers, and pleasure boaters. It is a popular port along the intercoastal waterway. The river hosts many marinas, yacht, sailing, and rowing clubs. Sailboat racers and cruisers share the water with kayaks and rowing skiffs. Volunteers monitor the river at several points to track salinity, temperature, bacteria, and turbidity. Similar to Messick Point on Back River, the water is generally clear, deep, and salty. Conditions in Hampton River make it ideal for growing oysters and other shellfish as we see here in these oyster cages. Several boaters have oyster gardens to encourage the cleaning of the water and serve as nurseries for spat. Bacteria is usually not a concern given the volume of water during ebb and flow tides. Where the river is deep, there is little submerged aquatic vegetation. Further upstream, the water becomes more brackish or fresh. Legend has it that the head of the infamous pirate Blackbeard was hung from a pole at the mouth of the river at a spot called Teach's Point as a warning to other pirates. Underground aquifers play an important part of the peninsula watershed. Enview Plantation in the middle of Newport News is a valuable and important location because of its access to fresh water. Lebanon Creek in front of you is a very tiny creek running through the valley of the plantation fed by the underwater aquifer. If you look closely, the water bubbles out of the ground in several locations and is providing fresh, clean, cold, and continuous water even in the midst of drought. The water continuously bubbles. For the Indians and English settlers who lived here, fresh water was precious. Today, Lebanon Creek flows into the Newport News Reservoir, which is the source of drinking water for several cities and counties. In this time-lapse video, you can see the tidal effects of the Tidewater watershed on Lucas Creek. Lucas Creek is a freshwater creek that, as we previously mentioned, empties into the Warwick River and then into the James. Even miles upstream from the Hampton Roads and the Chesapeake Bay, daily tidal changes affect Lucas Creek and the surrounding salt marshes. The protection of these wetlands is critical to the water quality and biodiversity of our region. Because our community is surrounded by the Tidewater watershed, we all feel the effects when our watershed is under stress. Hurricanes, high tides, and nor'easters flood streets, homes, and businesses. Heavy rainfalls wash nutrients and pollutants off our streets and lawns into the watershed, causing algal blooms that are harmful for both people and aquatic life. Climate change and sea level rise only exacerbate these issues. Our volunteers are our eyes and ears for our water. Through citizen science and stewardship, we monitor the condition of our watershed. Everyone can help. Projects such as oyster restoration, tree plantings, and creation of riparian buffers are helping our waters. Avoid using fertilizers, pesticides, and pollutants to keep them off our watershed. 
I hope that you'll take a chance in the near future to come and visit our wonderful watershed. It is a diverse and beautiful area. If you have any questions about this project, please contact the Peninsula Master Naturalists.